Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here, and today we're going to be looking at Nisha's Storm Spirit. Storm Spirit is a hero that's very popular in the current meta, and there's quite a few reasons why. Now in this game in particular, I think the main value of Storm Spirit is his ability to initiate. In particular, it's his ability to initiate if you want to on heroes like Keeper of the Light. But in a lot of these comps that teams are running nowadays, you see a lot of position fours that are ranged heroes, and ranged heroes that aren't initiators, and in this game, he has a techies. Now you might be saying, oh, but speed, Techies has blast off. It's a stun. Yeah, but you gotta wind it up and it's slow. It's very committal and you can't really get out afterwards. So if that's your initiation tool, you're basically telling Techies to go in and die and likely not get off a lot of proximity mines or a good spell usage. He's not gonna hit multi-man blast offs. It doesn't feel good for Techies. So you have to understand how the pros look at it on a bigger picture. Storm is going to allow them to just have the go on one person uh, button with electric vortex and uh, that's that's very nice. Another reason why Storm is good right now in the current meta is because of the fact that supports need levels. Supports need levels more than ever because there's no tome. There's wisdom runes, but the seven minute wisdom runes don't give you that much. I'm sure if you're a support player, you agree. It's good, but it's not that much. And so you need a lane to farm. Storm Spirit is arguably one of the best jungling mids in the game, so when your support needs mid, you just go jungle and you can be more than happy about it. But in today's video, we're gonna be talking about Nisha's Storm Spirit, and I'm surprised he played this game so well, because at least in the games I've been watching, Storm Spirit seems best when paired with a Call, Io, or his best combo in my opinion, Pugna. All three of these heroes can sustain his very delicate mana pool. We're gonna see how Nisha does it with no help. Also, I wanna tell you guys that if you've been struggling with solo queue and you're looking to get to the next rank, I'm gonna be able to help you. Like literally with the Game League website, I'm going to give you guys guides that are going to make it unbelievably clear on what you need to do. So if you've been stuck in the solo queue grind, you don't know what to do, and you wanna become absolutely broken. <laughs> but like actually, you wanna become much, much better at Dota, and you want to take it more seriously, the Game Leap website is going to help you do that. So click the link down below. I'm going to help you get to the next rank, and I'll see you there. So for a brief rundown on the laning stage, Storm Spirit is a very mechanically difficult hero as the levels progress, as you can get very technical with using your E for attack speed slow when to vortex, but I'm not going to cover that in today's video. I have plenty of videos on this channel going in in depth on how to lane with Storm Spirit, and so if you're interested in that, I'm sure you could find it if you type in Game Leap Storm Spirit. It's somewhere in the past, even if the video is old, the hero fundamentally has not changed in the laning stage. However, uh, for the most part, you want to spam your Q for a bit of a breakdown. Spam your Q. When you use your Q, it's gonna give you a charge of your E. You can use that charge of E to either secure another last hit or harass the enemy as it does bonus damage and slows their attack speed and movement speed. So basically, yeah, you wanna use the Q a ton. It's only 70 mana. You're gonna get a very early bottle because you're gonna secure the early last hits with your Q. Bottle is super overpowered. Uh, obviously, because there's water runes, you're guaranteed to get a rune. And so, uh, yeah, the mid lane, extremely easy to sustain. Use the Q. You can see at this point, he's used five Qs in a minute and a half. He has this bottle now. That's going to allow him to then pick up the water rune and continue to sustain his mana pool. After that, he buys a Falcon Blade. And there's a couple of different storm builds I've seen. I've seen Gloves of Haste Rush. I've seen Sage's Mask Stick for mana regen. Now Blades of Attack. And I've even seen Boots. So how do you know what to go? Essentially, you kind of have to just see how the lane is playing out. I think against Dragonite, maybe he's concerned about having a lack of damage against the Breathe Fire, or maybe he just sees it as a way to get denies. It's hard to exactly say what uh, Nisha is looking to do here is he's going to use the Vortex to pull in the Dragonite and do some good harass, but I wouldn't worry too much about whatever item you're buying here. Mostly focus on getting good CS by spamming your Q. And then eventually, if you're against a melee hero, use your W very frequently as it only costs 60 mana and gives you a charge of your E, right? So, <laughs> especially when you hit level 5 and you have 2 points in E. I'm actually surprised he took a second point in Remnant. Uh, a lot of people nowadays are putting the second point in Overload just to get it to that 50 damage mark so it feels much better to use after you use your Q. Also, the Q doesn't scale extremely well, so I am a little bit surprised to see this build. I guess maybe he just thinks it's better for pushing in the wave and securing uh, last hits, for instance, like right there. So moving on, the only real important thing from here is that he buys a Falcon Blade, then he buys Boots, then he's going for Treads. He doesn't buy any clarities up until this point because they're just going to get canceled, and this is honestly right here here is the biggest mistake most players won't make. So in this scenario here, a lot of players, they have no charges, no bottle charges, bounty runes are not spawning, power rune isn't for a minute, you can't just stay in the lane at this HP pool, you're likely to die to Dragonite, or you're just not going to be able to do anything, right? 
it's, it's just a horrible spot to be in. You'd much rather be full resources. But players just think like, oh, I can't go back to base. You want to jungle this camp. If you have like, let's say you're like half half, you can jungle this camp, then this camp and then go base. Or you can just in his case, he was very, very low, just jungle the, the deeper camp and then he goes back to base. And this is huge because it's going to allow you to be a threat on the map. If you don't make this play, you're not going to be able to farm. You're not going to be able to look for a gank. Instead, he's able to heal up his mana pool, seize the potential axe kill, which I think, yeah, he doesn't TP into because, you know, he's like, okay, they have it. So he doesn't TP into that. He's going to TP mid and try to defend the tower. It's a very hard game to keep your mid tower alive. You're against a Dragonite and an Enchantress. So, you know, it's, it's a tough game. They're going to go for a kill onto the Dragonite here. as he's going to zip forward. Unfortunately, Nine makes a really good read of TPing out. Now, I will admit a big part of his game acceleration here was actually his rune usage and then the stacks that he got from his supports. Unfortunately, I know you guys aren't going to get stacks most of the games, uh, so it is what it is. But still, you're going to play about the same way Nisha is. He's going to pick up the 8-minute rune here, gets blessed by the gods. Of course, the best runes on Storm are uh, Regen and Arcane. But Haste and DD are fantastic as well. This hero is easily one of the most aggressive rune users in the game. Like, if you get a good rune on Storm, DD, Haste, Regen, Arcane, you can go crazy. Like, absolutely crazy on this hero. Uh, if you get a Regen, generally you should use it to farm. It's just safer, but... Either way, he moves deep into the jungle here. I think they were scouting out Axe stacks, and they do end up finding one, so this is pretty huge. They're gonna blast off on Techies. Coddle comes in and snipes uh, a couple of the creeps, but he's gonna use the remainder of the Arcane to get out here, and actually even uses the remainder of the Arcane to actually farm up the jungle, which I really like. This is why stacking is so important, okay? If you're a support player watching, take quick note. If you're a mid player and you have support friends or people you play with, it's this is good information to relay to them. It's important that they stack because it makes it particularly efficient. Number one, if they want to sap the XP, it's good. They can sap it for their six. Or when you're farming the jungle, it's efficient for you. And then they can go get their mid lane. Because look, Boxy's five, Soundsers four. They need a lane. They need a lane. If they don't get a lane, their games are going to be really, really awkward. So they're giving the silencer the mid lane. You will see basically every pro team do this in the majority of games. You kind of have to. There are other options, for instance, uh, mega stacking ancients and sitting next to it. Like you think that's very, very, very useful. But point being, you need to get your supports levels. So look what he does, okay? He's gonna farm the stacks, then he's gonna farm his way back to base. As we kind of talked about, you farm the deep camps and he zips to base. He had 300 mana and there's a rune coming up in 20 seconds, but why zip back to base? It's so you can be prepared to number one, fight the rune if that's what you wanna go for, number two, defend a tower, continue to farm, whatever it is, it allows you to, to have that option. If you play Storm without one of these heroes that just constantly spams you with mana, you have to go base. Even with those heroes, you kind of have to go base early game before their spells are truly online, like like the life drain on Pugna or when uh, Chakra Magic isn't that high of a mana pool. But yeah, he's going to regen his mana up here, TP's in, and because of the fact that he has quite a bit of mana, he was going to look for the Coddle kill. Unfortunately, he was just going to have to settle for the DK, but still, he can be here for the DK kill. His presence with full mana is going to kind of cause them to go base, actually makes the move on to Soxa and takes him out. And you can see this is, I mean, this Storm hero, it's very good against Coddle, right? Uh, yes, if you get blinding lighted or if he gets like too many items too early, it can be a little weird because then you can't kill him if he gets like early Pavis and uh, Glimmer. But yeah, and until then, you can see he zips in, zips on top of him, very important, jukes the blinding light, gets the overload hit off, then he's going to Q. Typically, you pull hit and then Q. This execution is actually a little weird. I guess you can do it this way too. I, I suppose it's fine. Oh, I just haven't seen it like this, but he's going to Q, hit, the remnant's going to connect, and uh, one more hit's going to do the job. So, complete solo kill onto the coddle. And that is going to cost him. You can see this is kind of the problem with Storm. Without one of these mana heroes, that's the majority of your mana pool. Like, frankly, it is. And so, let's see what he does here. He's going to jungle, take uh, this camp. Oh, actually, oh, he auto attacks. Why did he do that? he didn't want to use his mana yeah so he saves his mana for the stack kind of he's gonna clear the stack arm it up then he's gonna walk over here to the left does have a clarity going by the way so that's important to know he's gonna farm up the centaur camp then he's gonna farm this deep camp is he gonna go base no he doesn't decide to go base here so the half mana pool here this is where things can be awkward and i even think it is a little bit awkward for him here as the double damage rune oh he picked it up but he didn't bottle it <laughs> no that's so bad they instantly smoke him because he and Storm DD is so powerful, so they're gonna go on the axe here, but oh, okay, yeah. 
Ooh, ooh, that is that was not good. Is he gonna get out? Barely gets out. So yeah, that was a little overforced. That play would have been way better. And I even think Nisha probably messed up in that general sequence. Maybe he should have just went back to base even with half mana, half HP. But this is as I said, this is the reason why I don't love Storm um in some games, especially without these like booster heroes. Because you can get it put in that weird spot, right? In that spot, he ended up going for the rune. I think, yes, if he bottled, he would have been full HP, full mana. So it probably was a good decision, honestly. But uh, you, can, you can definitely see the problem with this hero if you're not careful. From there, he's going to push out the mid lane and continue to farm neutrals. At this point, he's let his supports both get their level 6s and 7s mid. Because he really hasn't pushed in the mid lane a lot. Like, he's doing it now, now that his supports don't really need the levels as much. But notice that he wasn't doing it earlier. Oh, the DK went for the rune. What a bait. Oh, 9 got baited in there. Beautiful bait from uh, from Liquid. All right, now let's talk about his item build. And this is very important because at level 15, he has a 250 health town. And that synergizes really well with the fact that he has number one, a Falcon Blade, which gives him health. Magic Wand, of course, health. Kaya and Sanj, which is key this game because he doesn't go BKB, right? He even goes Witchblade, which we'll talk about in a second. But the Kaya Sanj is great. And the reason why it's great is because of the fact that he's against an Axe. BKB does not save you from Axe Call. Especially Axe Call plus Ursa, BKB doesn't do anything in that case. And then against Dragonite, yes, it can be useful if you're going on Cuddle, you can free BKB. But let's say the enemy team smoke ganks you, the BKB isn't going to save you. Oh, by the way, I love the Grove Bow. Such a great item on Storm because you are auto attacking quite a bit. And I didn't mention the Witchblade. Storm doesn't have great armor. He does at level one, but like from there, you don't buy items that really help your armor. So against the Ursa and the DK, it's very good, right? Uh, even against Sench, it's not bad. But yeah, I love the Grove Bow, especially when you have like a Techies following you up. And he even has an Axe Beastmaster, which is all magic damage. The the spell Lamp from Grove Bow is so underrated, it's unbelievable. Like people should take this item on like Ember Spear at some games. No joke. But okay, goes in. And yeah, at this point, he really is just the initiator of this game. And keep in mind, you can auto attack on Storm. Like what I really like about Nisha is he's not afraid to just like auto. I think a lot of people think like you have to be zipping, zipping, zip, 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 zip. You can't just like auto. And a lot of the time with this build, you're designed to just click hard, right? You have quite a lot of attack speed. He actually at level 10, I've seen some people take 20 attack speed at level 10. He took mana regen. Either way, um, is he really gonna commit on nine here? He's zipping a lot. Yeah, he was zipping a lot there because he didn't want to get called. So you can see, definitely aware. But he has an arcane rune, which I can't... Honestly, Tundra did not contest the runes well this game at all because... Oh, nice. Nice use of the, the global. That probably is going to keep him alive here. It definitely is. He's going to go for the pull. Got it close. Ooh. So they take them all out. Beautifully done. Just wonderful execution. Doesn't overextend. They find the pick off onto the DK. And honestly, a lot of that fight was the arcane rune. Even here, look... <laughs> Our gainer is so stupid. Why does it make him cost no mana? Like literally, you, this hero is so abusable if you get Arcane Rune. It's crazy. Now, as I said, the value of Storm for a lot of these pro teams is the fact that he's just the initiator. And that's exactly what we're going to see in this fight. By the way, the shard's OP and more people should be buying it. I don't know why people don't buy it. That's a side note. So in this team fight here, he understands, you know, he has to be careful this game. So he zips onto the Ursa, pulls him, but then doesn't even go for a single auto attack. And that's massive because... Yes, he can rely on good global, right? Technically, uh, he could. Well, does DK... Okay, so DK has BKB. So not really, right? Not really. It would have to be some, like, perfect global timing. Uh, so he's just going to zip in, pull the Ursa, and this is going to initiate the fight for them. What he's trying to do is just keep the, keep them in position so the beast can set up for the roar, wild axes, blood right, arcane curse. It just is keeping someone in position so your ranged spells can get in range. Uh, well, that would make sense. But, yeah. Then he's going to kite out, and this is... Once again, kind of the problem with Storm with no buff up hero. Uh, that zip, even though it didn't seem very major, with no arcane rune, was actually the majority of his mana pool. As they're going to try to cut out the Ursa here, they actually do a great job of preventing him from going down right away. The blinding light does save him from the call there, so God bless Soxa, as he is going to have to kite out. But this is kind of why the Witchblade is nice. When you run out of mana, it still allows you to actually kite people and, and dish out pretty hard auto attacks. As he gets a little bit low, but he's going to be able to pop his one, continue to try to zip. Uh, unfortunately, does end up going down at the uh, at this fight. And that fight wasn't perfect, honestly. They, they did such a good job on Tundra uh, keeping the Ursa alive. But eventually, unfortunately, 33 decides to go back in. He gets kited out and goes down. So, uh, yeah, very favorable trade for Liquid. And yeah, to end off the video, we're going to look at one of the last fights of the game. Uh, this game does actually go for a little bit longer, but still, uh, this ends up being quite a beat down from Liquid, and this fight is definitely one of the more convincing fights. So from here, his job is just to initiate, right, catch uh, kind of whoever he sees. So you'll see here, I think uh, Insane gets jumped by the Dragonite, and he probably should have BKB'd on 9, but he didn't. 
And it's a good decision for him to go on him. Now, it might seem crazy because it's like, oh, this guy's BKB. You're not going to burst him from full. He's too tanky. The thing is, you want to force the BKB and chip people down. And that's what they do here. They chip down the BKB of nine. He gets solo in, in this exact case. He gets solo where Mickey is actually able to just commit. Typically, that's not the case. Uh, but yeah, that, that is definitely the case here. So nine messes up pretty hard on the Dragonite. That's going to cost him the fight for sure. So horrible initiation from Tundra to be blunt. And uh, Nisha's going to be able to pick them apart. He knows Axe has no BKB, so he's able to blow him up. Remnant to cancel the blink on the air saw on the respawn. And they're able to win the fight. As he looks for the Coddle, does see the Glimmer, so they can kind of chase. I can't believe he doesn't buy the Shard. I'm telling you guys, the Shard is OP. It's really good. I really... God, I hate that these guys don't buy the Shard. I'm telling you, they just don't know. They just don't know. But alright, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one, and I'm out. Peace. And that's all, but remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website, where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below, and I'm out. Peace.